Hello, Marcel here to show you particle occlusion map and the meshing particle trails and smoothing options in Lucid Physics plugin for 3ds Max. A particle occlusion map is a way to eliminate certain particles when generating a volumetric voxel grid inside a mesh using a 3D map. So let me show you how this is done on a simple sphere. I'm gonna take this sphere and I'm gonna apply a water preset to it. If I go and see the options of my Lucid modifier, as long as I have the show as particles option on when I start simulating, you can see that the sphere gets voxelized and there are a whole bunch of particles inside of it that get generated. The volume by default is completely filled, but this might not always be your preference. Sometimes you may want to leave holes inside of this volume or indeed just generate parts of it. And this can be controlled via a 2D or a 3D texture map. And in most cases, you probably would want to use a 3D texture map because we are dealing with a three-dimensional volume. If you scroll down to fluid settings of the Lucid modifier, you see that there is a particle occlusion map that is empty by default. If I go into my material editor and if I create a map something like a checkers, which will be easy to see in our resulting mesh, I can take this checker map and I can drop it into this particle occlusion map over here. And I'm just going to select instance so that we get the real time feedback inside the material editor as we are modifying it. So if I just re-simulate, you see that the pattern of the particles has changed. Mapping right now is not going from zero to one like you would expect expect from the UV coordinates of the mesh. Instead, it is using the world coordinates. So we really need to increase the size of this map to see effect of a checker on a larger scale. So let me just decrease the tiling to a smaller value, maybe make it exactly a hundred times smaller. And if I press simulate right now, you can see that the checker map has excluded some of the particles that get generated inside our sphere. So this is a demonstration of how the 2D occlusion map, such as checker, can allow you to create a slight of your mesh. However, if you want some more interesting results, we can use a 3D texture map such as noise, for example. So I'm going to go and replace my checker map with a noise map, which is a three-dimensional map inside 3ds Max. I'm going to change some of the parameters to make the noise a little bit more prominent. So for the occlusion map to work, we are only concerned about exact black and white values. So it's kind of important for you to have the map that has a high contrast in it. So we should only have either black or white components inside of our map. And maybe I will also make this map much smaller. Once I turn it on, you can see that there are now visible holes inside of our mesh. So you can play with the parameters of the map. And once you get the value that you like, in this case, you see that the mesh is no longer a sphere, but instead some kind of a fractal cloud type of thing. You can simulate it as you always did before. And these particles will behave just like they did before. An interesting application of the same behavior is to be able to take a mesh and instead of simulating this, you may want to just untick the show as particles option and get the resulting mesh, which essentially will be any volume sliced by some of the texture maps. So at this point, I can right click and just convert this to a polygonal mesh or I can collapse this modifier stack and this will be my final result. So the simulation is only one of the applications of this new feature. And in fact, you might even find it more useful for modeling purposes. Of course, you can always increase the resolution of particles. Now we get more detail inside of our sphere. So the second part of this video actually deals with the meshing of the particles themselves. And there are a few options that haven't been covered in previous videos that might come in very handy in controlling the meshing of your your particles. I'm just going to create a new scene here with a teapot and we're going to simulate this teapot as a fluid and I'm going to create a quick collision sandbox object. I'll apply a water preset for my teapot. We see that it just falls down and splashes just like any other fluid would. And when I uncheck the show as particles option, our teapot is meshed using the particle meshing options. If you scroll down to view the fluid settings meshing options, you can see that there is a whole bunch of different parameters inside the meshing objects group. There are a few effects that can be accomplished using these parameters. And one of the effects is for the particles to be able to leave trails behind them. So by default, this velocity trail time is set to zero. But if you change it to something else, like a small value of 0.3, you can see that we have an immediate effect inside of our viewport preview. And what this does is essentially takes the velocity of each particle and it creates a trail of particles behind it. And it uses those additional particles to generate the mesh. 0.1 seems to be a much nicer value. So now now, as I continue my simulation, you can see that the particles have a direction instead of being simulated at one spot at all times. And when 
they're flying through space, they have a little bit of trail going behind each particle. I have recorded the simulation just so we can see it in real time and this definitely creates a much more interesting effect and makes the simulation look more complicated than what we originally started with. There are a few other options that you can control in addition to this. One of the interesting options are the adaptive threshold and the smoothing radius option. So if adaptive threshold is increased, then the number of faces in the resulting mesh will decrease. So this adds some optimization to the resulting mesh. And they can also use the smoothing radius parameter in conjunction with the smoothing iterations and the half width value to smooth out the mesh. So think about this as a more of a turbo smooth modifier applied on top of this mesh. Let me increase the smoothing iteration to one and change the smoothing radius to a different value. As I do this, you can see that the resulting mesh is now much smoother and I can control the coarseness or the smoothness of this by changing the half width parameter. By changing these parameters, we are now able to achieve a different result completely from what we had before. At this point, the mesh is smooth, but we are still able to retain those particle velocity trails as a part of the simulation, making the result look completely different. And in fact, now it almost looks like there are more particles than the actual simulated count, but they are grouped together due to this kind of mesh smooth effect that we have applied on top of it. So these options give you more control over the meshing of your particles. Even if you have previously recorded them using the show as particles options on, these options will apply if you mesh the particles after the recording. Feel free to use these new controls to achieve a different meshing effect that you desire in your particular production scenario. Thank you very much for watching.